Hello guys today, welcome. Today I'm going to list off my top 10 games for 2015. Don't move. Coming in at number 10 is Batman Arkham Knight. So yeah, this game, although being locked at bloody 30 FPS, ran fine on my PC. I'm sure that if the frame rate is unclocked, I can only hit about 40 anyway because of how, you know, badly ported the game was. I'll deal with it. But still, it made up for it with a really interesting story, great gameplay, and a lot of depth. There was tons to do, and I really got my money's worth, surprisingly. The game goes wrong, we're really hoping that, this, that the performance doesn't just tank here. Nothing, here we go. Hey, it handled it! Coming in at number 9 is Mad Max. Mad Max. This game, uh, I was, I, I hyped a lot. Um, I don't know why. Just from the gameplay and stuff I saw, I was really, really excited. I was like, this may be amazing. I thought it was good, but the story was a little bit bland, and there wasn't enough gameplay to hold me for long enough to even finish the game. Coming in at number eight is Kerbal Space Program. So the final version of this game came out this year. Um, I've put hundreds of hours into this game. It's bloody fantastic. There's so much to do, it's so, it, oh, and it's so complex, and it's so difficult. But once you understand it, it's amazing. It really brings back the old days of playing Minecraft, and being, you know, knowing every single crafting recipe and everything's name, and having to learn how to do everything, and being the greatest of all time. Coming in at number seven, is Grow Home. Yes! <coughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> My voice. Coming at number seven is Grow Home. He is a tiny little robo man. He's not. Yeah. So this little, uh, this little indie game, kind of, although it's not from an indie developer. It's from a small part of Ubisoft. Um, shockingly, and it's just great. There's not a whole lot of story. It's just pure gameplay. It's not that long. It has some replayability. There's lots to do. It's enjoyable. I enjoy background games. I like having like, you know, a movie, a live stream, or a couple of videos running in the back on you know on my other monitor. And on the main monitor just playing this game with the uh, sounds low, no pay to win or anything. There's no there's no, you know, pop ups happening all the time, there's no lobby joining. You just start the game, you play it for a few hours, you finish and you go, I had a lot of fun with that. That only cost me ten quid. That was brilliant. Should be scrolling by right now. Thank you all you people for being nice in your comments. <laughs> Coming in at number six is Until Dawn. Hey Josh, no hot water's kind of a major oversight, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, this was kind of a shocker for me when I built my list. I put this on the list, and it got really high. I don't know why. The story wasn't amazing, but the graphics really held me. The story, I feel like it could be a little bit more complex and a little bit more depth, but it was nice. I, I, I enjoyed it, and I didn't want to put it down. I played it all the way through on day one, played every single minute, and it's a really nice start to that sort of telltale, but with a higher budget. Ah! What the hell have you done to them? Coming in at number five, this one may shock you, it's Viscera Cleanup Detail. So today we are genuinely playing a game about cleaning up. So imagine after a game of Doom or Halo or something, there's blood and bodies everywhere. Look at this stuff. There's just it's just disgusting. But who cleans it up for the next game? Who you go into the next match and it's completely clean. But how does that happen? Huh? How does that happen? Well, from our team here of the Viseri cleanup team. As you can see, I've already cleaned up quite a bit. I'm actually making, oh god damn it, I'm making a mess. This goes back to what I was saying about Grow Home, just something I can play and enjoy. It really does feel like some game that you shouldn't like, which is just purely about cleaning. A bunch of stuff happens, a bunch of people die. The videos I made on it did really well, and then I did a Christmas one, and there is one more that I'm gonna play. There's one more DLC, and they all come with it. There's so much gameplay to this. The graphics are nice, the controls are really good. It's really easy to pick up and put down. And, you know, uh, oh, you know, over a week you finished one room and you're running through and you're like, it's all so clean. And you put your thing in, it's like 100% and you're like, yes, I am the god of cleaning. Activate. 
Whoa! Oh, whoa! Okay, that made a lot of stuff lag. Coming at number four, Star Wars Battlefront. I loved this game. I don't know why everyone complains so much about it. You've got to wonder what all these... What does this button do, actually? Walk away. Just pretend it didn't happen. Just walk away. I, I, I don't. It was. It was just fun. It's just fun. I do wish there was a story. I think that's a massive point they missed. Ran really well. I run it on ultra at 60 frames a second on 1080p on my GTX 970. The gameplay was really good. I like the first and third person. The movement and things just felt really nice. The guns were good, there was enough progression, I played the hell out of the beta, played the hell out of the full game. I liked the heroes, I liked the modes, I liked the different worlds, I liked the story thing, I liked the collectibles. I just really liked the game. Coming at number three, Rocket League. Rocket League is a vehicle-based soccer or football game where you use your rocket power car to score goals. That's such a weird... Like, objective. I, I didn't know this game was coming out until about two days before it did. I watched a live stream and go and went, this is the best game ever. Just watching people play it, I was like, this looks so good. And then I stayed up, and it didn't come out at 12. And I was like, crap, it's not coming out at 12. So I stayed up all night until, like, 6 in the morning when the game actually came out for, um... What the hell is that? Coming in at number two, this isn't a shocker. It's just Cause 3. Oh! Oh god! Did I break the train? Whoa! And another train crashed into that! That was bad timing! This game only came out recently. I haven't been able to get a lot of time and I haven't been able to finish it. And this is definitely a game I'm going to finish. It's just a lot of fun. It's quite simply what I can say. It, 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 it gathers Just Cause 2. I don't know. I'm just... Right now, it has the GTA 5 effect where just the more you play it, the funner it becomes, because you start unlocking things. You're like, I'm going to go to this base and blow up this, and it's like, now, now you have a jet that also is a transformer. And you're like, why? <laughs> and so the more, the more fun you have, the more fun you get. Oh, Jesus, that was mean. I'm coming for you, bitch. Never escape Rico Rodriguez. Oh my god, there they are! I'm coming to kick- Oh, she's falling back down! Her helium's run out! Are we gonna be able to do it? I think we're doing it! I think we're finally gonna kick this bloody woman! I made her bigger again, she's going back up! <laughs> coming in at number one, and this may blow some minds, it's Fallout 4. We, we need to get to the vault! Now! Almost there. I love you. Both of you. This even blew my mind when I was creating the list. I was looking at it all of my list, and I was moving bits around, and I was like, little, 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 and I just couldn't think of something I enjoyed more. I was like, was Just Cause 3 better? No. Maybe Rocket League was better than Just Cause 3. No. Was it better than Fallout? No. I just couldn't pull it. It was just so good. Everyone was way overhyping this game, and I just kind of went, I like Fallout 3. I completed it really fast. I haven't really played any of the other games. I played New Vegas a bit. And then when it came out, day one, it was midnight, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna launch this. Played for four hours straight, it was four in the morning. And I just played it ever s I just keep playing it. My favourite thing to do isn't even to the story, I just turn off all the sounds, do something else during it, I explore, kill raiders, collect things, and build the biggest settlement ever. My settlement is so cool. There's turrets, there's different things. I love downloading mods. The mods are just so much fun. I can't wait for the pack to come out, which makes modding easier. The graphics are completely acceptable. People who complain about the graphics are dumb. I feel attached to my character. I don't feel attached to the story. The story was not good enough. The characters in it were really interested, but totally wasted. Uh, the dialogue wheel was crap, but I fixed it with a mod. Really, everything that was wrong about the game, I fixed with a mod. I got texture resolution stuff. I got a different wheel, I made sure that you can wear stuff and then armor over it. So yeah, those are my games of the year. So yeah, 
That is 2015. I've got more stuff coming up for the end of the year. Of course, we've got the give. God, this month's going to be so cool for KGM64. If you disagreed or agreed with anything I said, make sure to tell me down in the comment section. I'd love to know you guys' opinions. Anyway, let's say thank you for and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!